My 365 Podcasts with me, Pete Cohen. Hi, it's Pete Cohen here. Welcome to another My 365 Podcast. Now, I'm very excited uh, today to bring you this uh, broadcast because it's with someone who, who I know very well and someone who has actually been working with me to bring all of these podcasts to to you. Uh, his name is Casey Woodward uh, and uh, he's actually a doctor as well and he's someone who's been extremely helpful and really helped getting this content out to the world but there's a lot more to this man than just putting some podcasts together. Uh, Casey, how are you my friend? Thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you for inviting me, Pete. I'm very well, thanks. Excellent. Tell us a little bit about uh, yourself. Tell us what. Uh, tell us what you do. Uh, right. Yeah. So it's a good. Good question. So um, I guess my career to date has been a little bit varied. Um, so I guess for those of you who do know me, um, I'm probably sort of most well known for, for, for recently completing my, my PhD, um, which was in medical science and, and specifically that was all to do with uh with w- sort of wound healing and um inflammation and and so what that really uh, looked at was quite how um a condition which is called hyperlipidemia so excess f- uh, cholesterol and fats in the bloodstream how that impacts on 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 our on our wound care and, and how it impacts um on, on cardiovascular disease so you know it causes our blood to become more, more sticky, uh, and, and we look, I looked at kind of how that occurred and, and kind of what were the ramifications for that in terms of patients. And then um, more recently, I've kind of jumped from human health to, to animal health, which is something which I think is uh, is, is of equal importance. Uh, and so I'm, I'm working for uh, a consultancy firm looking at how we can best bring together lots of different players um, across the animal health sector to really try to drive, um, uh, you know, good welfare and good health status in, in a, across a number of different species um, on UK farms. So, so it's uh, it's uh, been a, a difficult uh, and challenging journey, but uh, is, is it, I'm in a good place, so it's uh, I can't complain. Excellent. There's so many questions I want to ask you because um, yeah, there's just so many. I think the first question I have to ask you is, Casey, what is it that you're most passionate about? Uh, something I sort of ask myself quite quite often. Um, I think that uh, it would have to be sort of science in general. Um, I guess that I guess I'm a bit a bit sad in that way. I, I do. Uh, I always have. A, I've always had a fascination for how things work, and uh, so so you know I, I really enjoy sort of science and, and kind of the whole scientific process of how we go about finding stuff out. Um, you know, and, and I sort of my my kind of area of expertise is is obviously in the molecular side of, of biology, and, I, and and that's what I really enjoy. Um, but kind of. You know, I've been really passionate recently about kind of alternative health as well um, and kind of, you know, how that all ties in with My365 and, and some of the, you know, the, the focus on kind of good mindsets. And, that, and that's something which I've really devoted a lot of time to over the last kind of 18 months or so. Wow. Wow. So look, let's start off by talking about when it comes to really good health. What do you think are some of the key fundamentals? I mean, good to talk about cholesterol as well, because I know there's a lot of controversy about that. But let's just start off with, from your perspective, what is good health all about? You know, I would say that kind of um, things like a positive outlook on life, you know, is 100%, um, you know, fundamental for, for you know, for, for pushing yourself and and, and kind of being sort of in the right mindset to, to, to live a healthy lifestyle because I think that when we look at people who are stressed um, and particularly you know people who are suffering from from inflammation we know that these people tend to be be fatigued uh, in some way they tend to you know have stress and elevate stress hormone levels and um, so I think that a positive mindset plenty of sleep as well uh, and you know and, and a good diet you know obviously can't be understated for for you know for, for 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 good health and i think what was quite what's been quite interesting since i've been working in the animal um health side is that um i've looked a little bit at, at some of the diets which we feed our uh, um our livestock animals 
And these tend to be um, diets which are very rich in carbohydrates um, and grains. And it's, it's almost quite ironic that the diets which we feed our pigs to fatten them up is quite similar in a lot of ways to the diets which we, which we, we commonly eat ourselves. Wow. And we wonder why we've got problems with obesity and things like that. So it's, it's a very interesting parallel. Well, it's like opening up Pandora's box, isn't it? It's like you're opening something up. It's like, okay, because you've said two things there that have really kind of light bulb gone off for me, which is when you say about, you know, I wasn't expecting you to, to say, I didn't know what I was expecting you to say, actually. When but when you say a positive mental attitude, what about the research? I mean, did you come across any kind of research when you were studying around why people should be, or, you know, scientific research that's kind of proving that having a positive mental attitude is better than being stressed? No, I think it's one of those things which um, it, it does it does need for further inquiry. Um, I think that a lot is known about the effects of, stress um in heart that, disease uh, in heart disease and we know that stress uh, we have a lot of the, the molecular pathways which cause cortisol the stress hormone to impact on inflammation which is, which is kind of molecular stress um but but that doesn't mean to say that we know and we can quantify the effects of um positive mental attitude yeah so i think that's something which we you know is it, it would be quite difficult to do but it's it's uh, you know it, it's definitely worth worthwhile doing so, it but it's quite ironic isn't it that obviously people know that there's a link between stress and heart disease so mm -hmm. if there's a link between stress and heart disease is there a link between stress and cancer mm -hmm. you know is there a link between stress sure. and alzheimer's in which now is the biggest killer in the united kingdom right? well we, we we know that alzheimer's um is kind of being re reclassified as a, as, a, as a vascular disease which means that you know it's and it's very much driven by inflammation and it's the same underlying processes which you know are, are considered to to impact on heart disease or to impact on cancer and uh, mm. you know, mental health diseases as well so it's a hot topic at the moment wow so let, let's talk i mean the fascinating we talk about grains because mm. um obviously you know my background in, in weight mm. loss and having come across years ago this information which is in, information inflammation <laughs> that was kind of hidden from us around look let's cut fat out of the diet because fat makes us fat let's put more sugars in and the effects of carbohydrates it seems to me that my grandparents they knew that what made people fat was starch as mm. opposed to fat um so do you think that really is the case that people are eating too many grains too many processed foods which are causing inflammation obesity diabetes high blood pressure is that the case I, 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 yeah i i think so 100 uh, percent um i think that we 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 know that you know fruit and veg and, and the consumption of vitamins and minerals are kind of tantamount to, to, to good health um but i think that if we take a step back and we we look at kind of the economic perspective we know that that grains are typically cheaper foods that they you know they're, they're easier to produce on a, on a larger scale um yeah and and you know and and that, and that obviously that's what you know drives a lot of people you know is, is kind of how much how much money they got available to, to spend and in, it's interesting when i've been talking to farmers um sort of over the last few months they've sort of said that the percentage of our disposable income which we spend on food has never been lower so you know there was a point back in the in the sort of 50s and 60s where you know almost half of our disposable money was was going on food um and now if you look at that figure that's around about 10 percent um and that's big, due, largely driven by the fact that our mortgages are going up um you know uh, our, the other costs of life are going up as well so so food is, is, is sadly sh sort of big, that proportion has begun to shrink yeah uh, and and now it's uh, obviously i think that the, some of the health concerns are, are, are sort of directly tied to that so so let's talk about inflammation so is is there a correlation between eating too many grains and inflammation in your body do you think uh, yeah, I, I think that, um, that there certainly is. But you've both. come across studies that have basically yeah, highlighted yeah, that. Yeah, um, no, absolutely. And um, so let's talk about the, the negative side effects that inflammation has on the body. Because I know that, you know, Dr. Rakowski, who you've met, he when he presented to us in Hull many years ago, I, I heard this expression for the first time, which is a new term in the med medical literature called inflammaging. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yeah, so I think 
so it's, it's probably best described as uh, how as inflammation accelerating the aging process. Uh, and we, I mean, we could we could talk for, for hours and hours, Pete, about kind of how how they they sort of uh, go hand in hand. Um, but essentially, molecular stress um, is the elevation of, of, of cortisol, really, and cortisol. Uh, under under normal physiological conditions, it, you know, is useful. Um, it helps us escape when when we you know yeah. we need to, when we need to run, you know, like a, like adrenaline and things like that. Uh, and it can even in, in the modern day, it can help us perform well for short bursts of time for exams and things like that under under sort of you know certain parameters. But you know, when when our bodies are continually exposed to it, it puts a lot of metabolic stress on us. Mm. That causes us to you know obviously to, to burn out and our cells don't divide as well as they should. You know, we lead to mutations in, you know, in, um, which obviously at the, at the start of cancers and things like that. So it's, I, I take it you've got a dog there, right? Yeah, sorry. He's, uh, no, don't yeah. worry. You know, you've you've taken your work home with you, right? Yeah, yeah clearly, clearly. <laughs> so inflammation, and obviously it's what's fascinating about um, dogs, I, more maybe more so than cats, I don't know, but... I often say to people, you should be the person that your dog thinks you are, because mm -hmm. often dogs think that, you know, you are the best thing since sliced bread. They they tend to be so optimistic, you know, so happy uh, and don't, don't get too stressed. But so basically what you're saying is stress, um, thinking, maybe thinking too much, being negative, that can cause inflammation. Uh, poor, is it also that if we miss have a lack of sleep, can that also cause inflammation in the body? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that the the kind of the endocrine system that the hormones, um, you know, which which our body needs for, for to, to balance itself, are very much regulated throughout the sleep process. Um, you know, along with kind of memory storage and, and and the like. So, I think that if we don't get sleep, or we, or if we don't get high quality sleep, you know, if if we're, we're sleeping in rooms which have you know have got too harsh lighting and things like that, then I, then I think that totally impacts on our ability to, to kind of regenerate um, which is obviously what what sleep's designed for um so it's, well. it's, it seems like we've created a world that is we're not really designed to live in like too mm -hmm. much light too much stimulation we evolution we haven't caught up as much as everything else has evolved we have evolved but not at the rate at which yeah. you know that like the ability not to sleep would be a good way to survive in the yeah. modern world because we could work 24 hours a day it just seems like if we're not careful, then we are more predisposed to all of these different conditions mm -hmm. that um, could really affect the quality of our life. So what about cholesterol? Because um, I think you know I, that I know uh, Dr. Malcolm Kendrick, who wrote mm -hmm. the book, The Great Cholesterol Con. And I, I, I'm just curious as to, you know, mm -hmm. I know, again, we could talk about this for ages, yeah. but no, is no, cholesterol actually... a bad thing? And, you know, you know, should we be eating saturated fat? Mm -hmm. um, you know, is, is having a cholesterol between five, um, f above five, is it actually high cholesterol? I'd love your opinion about this, but don't worry, we, no one's going to hold you accountable for what you're saying. <laughs> no, no, I, I think that, so So from my, from my studies, what I was looking at was, um, was, the, uh, was the particle that, that cholesterol travels around our body in. So we know that fat, you know, is it, uh, if you mix it with water, it's, it's, it's insoluble, it doesn't mix. And so the, the same is, is, is true in our bodies. So our bodies have a, a particular uh, protein which, um, which, tra which cholesterol goes around the body in. Uh, and this is called uh, a lipoprotein. Um, and so my, my PhD was all about looking at lipoproteins, which are, which are predominantly cholesterol-based. And um, now what we know is that when people become stressed, the, these cholesterols change. They undergo a process called oxidation. Um, which um, which what, which is what really what leads to this this kind of bad cholesterol image, and these are uh, these have a number of different effects, um, on, you know, on impact in the body. So we know that kind of so so from my sort of first hand experience, I, I've seen um, these oxidized lipoproteins have you know bad effects on, on, on a whole range of different cell types. You know, our, our white blood cells. Uh, our platelets as well, which are responsible for our blood clotting and and, and you know wow. so 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 I, so so first hand I can say that I I, I know that, that cholesterol in its modified form is bad, 
But unmodified cholesterol, we know, has got a lot of it is crucial for, for, for cellular health. We, you know, it looks after our cell membranes, our, our nerves to allow us to, to you know to, to move our bodies and, and stuff like that. So, so I think that cholesterol itself it isn't bad. I think it's the modification of cholesterol which um, which is a, kind of a byproduct of stress, um, you know, and the condition that we live in. Which really impacts, uh, you know, which raises our risk of cardiovascular disease. Wow. So. Well, you know, having spoken to you a few times, and I ask you, you know, how do you move through the world? You seem to move through the world in a very pragmatic way. Of, listen, yeah, you know, talk, talk to us. How do you move through the world? What, are, what are your kind of your your values? Mm -hmm. What are the the things that you stand by in how you live your life? Uh, yeah, I mean, I. I, I um so I think it's kind of the opposite of of, of kind of it, at work I, I have to be very kind of you know uh, looking at theories and, and and kind of taking account a lot of data you know, before we make decisions. Whereas um, in, in my personal life, I tend to be very much kind of just um, just just as long as we keep get keep moving, get something started, and just just get on with things because I you know I, I I'm a sort of quite a firm believer that you know that. You know, sometimes the, what is meant to happen will happen, kind of thing. Um, and mm. so, sometimes some of the decisions which we make, which we, we stress over, I think you know aren't. You know, uh, there's no point in some ways because you know everything tends to work out the way it ought to. Wow! Uh, wow! So, 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 so that's not to say, obviously, that you know we can do whatever we want and just kind of you know keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best. But I think that you know, as long as we as long as we keep moving forward, I think the danger um, for all of us is, is to just to become, you know, is to stagnate and stay in the same job where, you know, for 20 years where we, you know, we, we've had no progression and we don't really like it. And I know it's, it's easy for me to say as a, as a young 25 year old, you know, um, that, you know, but um, how I see it anyway, and, and, you know, obviously feel free to, to disagree is that is that movement and variety are kind of um, paramount to, to our growth as individuals um, and, and that's kind of what I'm, I'm sort of trying to move towards, and you know, keep keep sort of trying to you know progress um, in terms of you know um, knowledge, but also then by extension career and stuff like that, and and move that way. But so that, that that's kind of how I you know I like to sort of move through the world. Yeah, it uh, sounds like it sounds um, that you've got a growth mindset. You know, you want to grow and learn, uh, but also you've got um, you can switch off the scientific part of your brain. And you also may be quite spiritual in the thinking mm -hmm. of maybe everything happens for a reason and there's something for me to learn. So it's it's kind of like you've, you're design engineering how your brain works, which is fascinating because I think a lot of people don't do that. Mm -hmm. They don't take control. Yeah. No, I, no I, I totally agree. I, I think that this is this, this sort of switching mindset has really come about over the last few years, sort of predominantly through reading different literature, which I was exposed to kind of obviously through, through, through the coffee business when we first first met, but also then later on through Towers of a Life Coach and, and obviously now through, through My365. So, so you know, I, I feel incredibly grateful for these kind of opportunities that, that have come my way. Um, and, you know, I, I think that kind of, I do look forward to sort of seeing how, you know, how I've changed in the, in the next 12 months because, you know, it seems to be like the, you know, the, if we look at, if we're plotting on a graph, you know, it's, it's the exponential, it's sort of really, you know, rocketing up. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, fast forward another 12 months, you know, I could be in a, in a really, really sort of strong, strong place. So, you know, well, that's, listen, it, it's been absolutely awesome working with you. And, uh, you know, to be able to say to say this, one of the things we were just talking about this morning about optimism and uh, fascinating research done around that, around if you want to have an optimistic life or a good life, you need to find activities that you enjoy. You need to have activity. You need to have a life where you can engage in something and you need to have a life of, of meaning. And then today I was talking about, you know, think of someone who you know who's alive, uh, write 300 words and then go to them and actually tell them. Now, I'm going to tell you, I haven't written the 300 words, but I'm extremely grateful for the efforts that you have gone to help me in helping me fulfill one of the needs or one of the goals I have, which is to impact the lives of 10 million people. And you have uh, really helped me 
in no, that process on many, many different levels with getting out these podcasts that uh, that we've done with many people. And we've got some great ones that we're going to be launching. So I'm very, very grateful to that to you. Oh, I'm, yeah, you, you're too kind. I'm, I'm very grateful for, for what you've done for, for, for not just for me, but for everyone else. You know, it's, um, you know, there's a lot of people who I could sort of say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to Pete, but I think that, uh, you know, you've you really genuinely impacted on, on uh, you know, on my life and and uh, and obviously by extension to people, those who are closest ra- around me. So uh, oh, that's great. That's, that's great. That's, so look, tell me, tell me, as we kind of start to wrap this up, a couple of things of, of the podcasts that we did this year, w- which are the ones that have really kind of really struck home at you and gone, whoa, when, when you listened to it and you heard it? Yeah, so I think the one the one which I've always listened to and I probably listen to the most is the Orderly Harrison one, yeah. uh, um, which it struck a chord with me. Um, it's a, it's a really really good podcast. I'd definitely recommend anyone to listen to it, particularly yeah. you know if if, you, if you're from kind of you know that well I think if you're from the southeast of England, you know you, you'll definitely uh, be able to relate. Um, and you know, even even if, if you, even if you're just of that kind of generation that, that kind of watched him and stuff, you, you know you'll definitely take something from it. Yeah. So I, so I really enjoyed that one. Um, I really enjoyed the what the one recently actually. You know the mem- the, the member of the month one so with with uh, with, with uh, Yvonne. Yeah. That was a really good. I, I always like hearing from from members um, and, and kind of. Because I always think they've got an interesting way. It's always interesting for me to kind of see what's the parts of my 365 which people have kind of taken on board and adopted. Um, so that's another one which I recommend. Oh, there's been so many. Obviously, um, the, the Ronnie O'Sullivan ones. Are, you know, that's a double part. That's really good. I know that's a, that's a, we did that a little while ago, didn't we? But that was that's a really really good one. Uh, I I, re- and- I really liked. Um- I've liked pretty much all of them, but the one with uh, Joe Desana, you know, the yeah. I love the way, in fact, we're going to be on his podcast one of these days. Mm-hmm. I recorded it some time ago, but I love, and I think you're a bit like this, that this kind of delayed gratification, this, mm-hmm. it's like th- thinking of it like a muscle that you've got to say to yourself in life, delay things that you want, you know, so I'll have that, but I won't have it now. I'll have it later. I'll have it tomorrow. And you kind of, you really stretch your I don't know what how, how to explain it, but it's just. And he spoke about those. Uh, I think those people in Japan that had to run those marathons and um, that went on. They had to run a marathon every day, and so mm. many of them died. <laughs> and he yeah. walked past these gravestones. But everyone's got a story to tell, and it's mm. it's great to be able to share those stories. But it's also great to create your own story, right? So, absolutely. What do, no. what would you say to people out there that are? I don't want to say necessarily lost, but they're not sure about what the future holds. What would you say to people? I, w- I would say, uh, and, I, and it's easier to say than to, to, than to practice, but I would say never lose hope, you know, because there's all, you, you never know what, what's around the corner. Uh, and I know it's a bit of a cliche, but you never know kind of which people are around the corner who can totally, you know, change your life. And, and, and changing life doesn't have to be a big, you know, long two-year process. It, it can be... As little as you know, as a few days before you can, you know, you can really alter that mindset. And I think it's one of the things we've talked about, Pete. You know, obviously on um, on my three six five is this how you know babies and young children they can they can switch their 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 mindset from you know their emotions, you know, in a blink of an eye. And I think that we as adults, you know, we've still got that that ability. You know, it's, yeah. it's you know, I, I totally, I'm a, I'm a massive massive supporter of that. You know, that you know. You know, you are what you feel, and you don't have to feel crap. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's uh, to put to put it bluntly. You know, and I know there's, there's obviously some exceptions. You know, um, obviously things like depression, we, we we don't, you know, we don't have all the answers, and it's easier to to, to yeah. But you know, yeah, but, but 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 again, it comes back to I love that, I mean, and I've just taken something from that as well. You know, I'm gonna put that in the front of my mind for today that we always have an opportunity to change the way we think in an instant. And you know, when it comes to depression, we we can it's a, it's a subject we obviously some people are very careful about what they say about this but i think this science is unequivocal that mm-hmm. a huge amount of depression is related to stress you know um and that's how we manage ourselves and then the stress is related to inflammation and you know it's kind of it's it's complicated but it's not complicated it really you know it's like <laughs> there's something that we, we we can do and um I'm excited about continuing to put information out there and, and working with you. And um, I'm very thankful for, once again, your time. This is a podcast I wanted to do some time ago. But Casey, tell us, how can people find out more more about you? Can they? Can we, can we all follow you on Facebook? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, follow me on Facebook um, or, or on Twitter. Uh, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm on both of those. Um, what's your What's your handle? Handle uh, is uh, Casey C A S E Y J Woodward W O O D W A R D. And on Facebook. Uh, Facebook, yeah. Uh, I think it's just the same, K- Casey Woodward. Um, you know, feel free to get in touch. Fantastic! It's going to be amazing to see. Uh, what people get from from listening to this. I know that I've personally taken a lot from it and uh, thank you so much. Let's get this information out there and let's let's change the world. Cheers for having us, Pete. Thank you. My365 is getting results with people just like you with our free live broadcasts, our Facebook group and our podcasts. We have already helped millions of people change their lives for the better And we're committed to help millions more to create the life they want today. So whether you want to be slimmer, fitter, healthier, happier, more confident, financially free, more successful, more productive, then My365 Elite is for you. You see, your future is unwritten and you have the power to change. And as you start to see changes, the thirst for more grows and your desire to get more results grows with it. And that is why I would like to invite you to join My365 Elite. My365 Elite is all about providing you with a way to embark on a game-changing voyage of self-discovery and success. You'll do more, discover more and achieve more. You'll optimize your life and you will have access to my coaching knowledge and experience in a structured way, but with the freedom to fit it around your own circumstances. That is what our membership program is about. So head over to my365elite.me. That's mi365elite.me and secure your place today. My365 Elite is only open for people to join for a limited time period. So head over now to find out more and secure your space today. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And if you want more free inspiration to optimize your life so you can achieve your goals in all the different areas of your life, then visit my365.me. That's my, M-I, 365.me and sign up to 365 days of free coaching with me, Pete Cohen. Thanks for listening and have an awesome day.